When you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you, smiles with you. When you're laughing, when you're laughing, oh you're laughing, oh you're laughing, and the sun comes shining through. But when you're crying, when you're crying, you know you bring on the rain, bring on stop your sign, stop your sign. Oh, be happy again when you're smiling, when you're smiling, keep on smiling, keep on smiling. The whole world smiles with you. And I go in and I see a little kid sit on a stoop, about seven years old, little, little fat little bastard sitting there, drinking one of them big sodas. And I felt bad. I said, kid, don't you know drinking all that soda's bad for you? And he took a big sip. He looked up. He said, my grandfather lived to be 80 years old. I said, did he drink a lot of soda? He said, no, he minded his own fucking business. <laughs> so I ate the little bastard, the little prick bastard. <laughs> Say, so like the shirt I picked up for the big show tonight. You like the shirt? Thank you very much. Seven hundred dollars. The big men's store. They stuck it right up my ass. I went in. I saw this sign. It said shirt sale. I go in. The shirt wasn't on sale. The shirt used to be a sale on a ship. Look at this bucket. <laughs> Holy Christ! The Titanic had this, or wouldn't have went down. Do you know if I was on a Titanic, that movie would have been an hour shorter? <laughs> sure, because I'm heavy and it went down faster. Okay. Good. That stupid bastard right up front. Okay, good. Oh, is it on? Was it on? <laughs> I love shopping at a big men's store. But you know what I hate when I go shopping there? Every time I go in there, all they got are three fat guy shirts. Big store, only three. If you ever see four fat guys together, two of them got the same shirt. <laughs> and every time I go in there, they got a little skinny prick like him working there. A little skinny bastard working at a big men's store. I'm wearing underwear, he can't even pick them up. <laughs> he comes out, he's dragging my underwear to me. Yo, e, yo. When I go to a big men's store, you know what I want? I want a big fat guy waiting on me. I want a big fat mannequin in a corner, size 50 underwear, so I can see what my nuts look like under my suit. Right, buddy? All right, all right. You want to see what my nuts look like under my suit? Yeah. <laughs> and just the opposite, I met a restaurant the other day, and a cute little hostess like her came up to me. She said, just a minute, sir, your waiter will be right with you. This guy came around the corner, he was huge. He was so big, the menu looked like a matchbook in his hand. Now, see, I want a fat guy selling me underwear, but I don't want a fat guy waiting on my table. <laughs> you know why? Guess why? I know why, sir, I wrote it. What do you think, I'm making this shit up? Get <laughs> Guess why? Guess why I don't want a fat guy waiting at my table? He's eating my food, the fat bastard. <laughs> Son of a bitch was eating my food. I ordered a club sandwich, comes to my table, I got three wedges. What the fuck is that? I got him against the wall. I said, where's my other wedge, you fat bastard? He goes, I don't know. He had meanies dripping from his lip. He had one of those red toothpicks stuck in his head. I want a skinny guy bringing my food. How much you weigh, buddy? About 40. Buck 40, what are you, an Indian? Buck 40, when mountain come down, sun over valley. You mean 140, you little prick? <laughs> yeah, you weigh 140 if you're dragging a deer, you little bastard. Look at you. I had a steak bigger than your day, you little prick. What's your name, pal? Josh. Josh, Buck 40. I wish I was as big as Josh. I gotta cut down. Am I getting big? Am I getting big? Yeah. No. Oh, I'm huge. I'm huge. Look, this is a two liter bottle. I'm a monster. <laughs> I asked the guy for spring water. Look at he gave me a suppository. Look. He said, don't open. He said, just shove it up your ass. It'll dissolve in 12 hours. <laughs> be watching baseball tomorrow. Come on, come on. Ah. You know where I got this bottle? Guess where I got this? The Bergada Casino in Atlantic City. Clap if you've been to the Bergada. Great casino, isn't it? Great casino. But here's the Bergada. All you can eat, shrimp, lobster, prime rib, two bucks. Gift shop, $7.50. <laughs> I keep it to remind me what an asshole I am for buying it. So what do you guys do when you gamble? What do you play? Blackjack. Fag. All right, what else? What else do you play? <laughs> know what I did last time I was down there? I know what I never do. I never play the penny slots. So this time, I, I'm going to try it last time I was down there. Lou, I got a $100 bill. I got a nice panini sandwich. I'm going to sit down and play the penny slots for about seven hours. I sit down, I put my $100 bill in, it sucked it up like a crack whore. <laughs> then I hit the max button, all of a sudden I'm playing 90 lines, 
75 cents a line. I hit the button. I got three beavers. I got an Indian with one leg pointing towards fucking Israel. The coupon comes out. I got 65 cents. My first fucking spin. A penny slot machine. I couldn't believe it. So now I'm going to my room. I'm all upset. And I see a bra and looks like a hooker. So I walk up to her. I said, hey, honey, I got $200 burning a hole in my pocket. She goes, you fat bastard. I got $1,000 a trick. What's wrong with you? I said, hey, I didn't know. So I went to the little cafeteria to get some neat. About an hour I come back and uh, I hear this. Psst. Hey, fat boy, you still got that 200? I said, no, I went to get some neat. I got 40 left. <laughs> what? She said, where's your car parked? I said, in the self-parking. She goes, give me the 40. I get her in the car. We're in the back seat of my car. She's giving me a little knobber. I reach around to get a little romantic with her, because that's the kind of guy I am. And I reached around. Guess what happened? I grabbed a big sack of nuts. Oh, my. I was furious. I go, as soon as you're done, get the fuck out of my car. Huh? $40, you might as well finish. What the fuck? Oh, you know what I really love to do when I'm in Atlantic City? Guess what my favorite thing to do is in the summer? On the boardwalk in Atlantic City. Guess what I love to do? Eat. Who you bastard? <laughs> Sir, your glasses are thicker than shit. Are you all right? What the fuck? It looks like I'm window shopping for eyeballs. What the fuck? I'm, I'm waiting for a goldfish to come swimming by. No, they're nice glasses. Just don't tilt your head to get that light. You burn a hole in my pants. I'll kill you. Huh? I love the eat, but know what I love the eat when I'm in a boardwalk? I'll get $100 worth of funnel cake. Oh, my God. I'll eat so much funnel cake on a boardwalk in the summer in Atlantic City. When I take a shit, I shit like this. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even flush it. I just keep looking at it. <laughs> Sometimes I'll sprinkle baby powder. Look, it's brand new. Look at, look at the big guy. I hear you, brother. You're making me hungry. And you shop at the big men's store, don't you? Wow. You know why? I got that fucking shirt. All right. <laughs> Jim and I stand. This fat guy's got to stick together. In the summer, we usually do. Okay, listen. <laughs> So guess what today is? Wait a minute. Oh, let me ask you this real quick. Did you ever try eating funnel cake on the boardwalk in the summer in Atlantic City without having about 60 seagulls peck your eyes out? <laughs> They'll chase you until every little crumb is gone. I've seen them take little children, file to the ocean, and drop them in. Big puff of powdered sugar. And how about this? Last summer I was down there. All the kids from Ireland come to Atlantic City, the boardwalk, to work their summer job. Did you know that? Yeah. It's packed with kids from Ireland. The seagulls bring them over. The seagulls, it's a two funnel cake trip from Dublin to Wildwood. <laughs> and you want to see something? Labor, everybody goes, you got to see the mummers pray when you come to, you know what? Fuck the mummers. You want to see something? Come down to Boardwalk Labor Day and see all the kids from Ireland holding up funnel cake to go home. <laughs> Little Polish kid holding up a bagel. <laughs> Fuck it, they drop off in Trenton. <laughs> Oh, well, we're killing in this fucking bar. Lose my number. Lou, lose my number. So guess what today is? My 29th wedding anniversary. <laughs> we had my honeymoon. Now, clap, who's married? How long are you married? Who's married? Who's the married people? How long? Well, get a good look at her, buddy. Is it her? What the fuck? Yeah, 35. 35. Now, you remember your honeymoon night with your lovely, what's your name? With my, Mike. Oh, wait, he stuttered. What the hear? He's on parole. Wait, I'm Mike and your lovely wife? Denise. Denise. You remember your honeymoon night? 35? Yes, remember making love to her? No. You said Denise. <laughs> <laughs> you said Denise, am I the first? And she looked up. She says, You look familiar. Remember? Yes, I do. <laughs> remember? Am I the first? You look familiar? Do I got to explain these jokes? How do I? <laughs> I honeymoon in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. Clap if you've been there. Yeah. Woo! White trash, white trash. What a night we had, the honeymoon suite, the heart-shaped waterbed, mirrors on the ceiling. I'll never forget the look in her face. What a blushing bride as she carried me over the threshold. She was so cute from the bedroom, she called out, honey, and packed my things. And there I was, the little skimpy red lace negligee. I had a little trouble getting it on, but it was beautiful. <laughs> and I came out, she was laying naked on the waterbed. The urge came over me, I jumped on, she flipped across the room. <laughs> we had to wait till the tide came in to make love. And she started giving me the mood. She started whispering recipes in my ear. <laughs> Two cups of sugar, I love you, fat bastard. <laughs> and you know what they had there?
here, a big round bed, a big round bed. It was the first bed I ever fit on perfectly. <laughs> you know what happened? I couldn't get off the bed. There's no corners on the round bed. Two hours I was stuck on this fucking bed. I finally popped a little boner and pole vaulted off the side. I was laying on the ground. She goes, you look like a sundial, you fat bastard. She's going, oh baby, you're hurting me, you're hurting me. I said, I'm not even dressed yet. What are you talking about? <laughs> so when I quick got naked, I jumped in the bed. She was checking me out. Oh, baby, I can't get over your body. I said, thanks a lot. I'm working out. <laughs> she goes, no, room service is here, you fat bastard. I can't get over your body. <laughs> then she came out. She was wearing crotchless panties. She said, hey, fat boy, how about a little of this? I said, are you kidding me? Look at it did to your underwear. I went, <laughs> See, I got to stay in the gutter. I got I to gotta stay in the gutter with you rat bastards. I gave her a dozen roses for her anniversary. She goes, I guess this means I'll be on my back with my legs in the air all week. And I said, what, you don't have a vase? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> You're a miserable bastard. Where's that? Where's the happy, happy part of this fucking bar? Blue's <laughs> m Ray's miserable birthday bar. <laughs> Get out, go fuck yourself. But, no, no disrespect to the women, but fellas, the honeymoon night, aren't they the biggest whores in the world on the honeymoon night? Yeah. Anything you want to do, they let you do. But just that night. Oh yeah, don't try to do the same shit the next night. They'll have you fucking arrested, am I right? <laughs> hey honey, how about a little more of that? Don't you ever touch me there again, you fat bastard. You try to get her from behind. They call, they call that dolphin sex. You try to get up the ant. She goes, eh, 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 Matter of fact, she did a lot of screaming that night. I was on top. <laughs> I'll never forget that flat look on her face. As I peeled her body off the sheets. She looked like a little fruit roll-up. I'll never forget it. I gave her a little love nickname. I called her Flounderhead that night. How, how cute she was. She, she winked at me with both her eyes on the side of her head. She, she flounders a flat fit. You're killing the whole show. But so I'm trying to lose weight. It's tough to lose weight. I try everything. I get into drugs. I try taking speed to lose weight, but now I eat faster. <laughs> I used to play racquetball twice a week, but now I can't fit to that little door anymore. <laughs> I'm even at a gym the other day. A beautiful girl. All right, I'm walking by a gym the other day. All right. All right, I was talking to a guy named Jim. <laughs> and a lady said, you got the body of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I said, thanks a lot. She goes, you better give it back. You're stretching the shit out of it. <laughs> Even when I'm sleeping, I think about food. The other night, I had a dream I was getting head from Aunt Jemima. <laughs> when I woke up, there was syrup everywhere. Were you there, you rat bastard? Aunt Jemima's pimp. Give him a nice hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Woo! Oh, all right, listen, let me do that. Let's do this here. Uh, uh, where's another couple here tonight? I can't keep picking them. You guys a couple? Yep. You're eyeing each other like you want to bang the shit out of each other. How long are you going on? A long time? A year. A year? You married? No. Okay, man, sure. We'll do this here. What's your name? Josh. Josh. What's your name, honey? Trish. Trish. <laughs> Josh and, and, and Tracy? Okay, Josh, you're laying in bed. Your lovely girl, Tracy, of a year. She's out having a couple spritzers with their friend. <laughs> she comes home, two in the morning, Josh, all spritzered up. She says, Josh... Take care of me and my friend. Would you do it, yes or no? Yes, you're laying in bed. You got your happy birthday pajamas on. On the back it says, go fuck yourself. Listen, would you do it, yes or no? Yes. Give him a nice hand. Yes, he would. <laughs> my buddy with the glasses, so what's your name? Paulie. Paul, would you do it, Paulie? No. Yeah. What a, what a Father Paulie. How you doing, Father Paulie? <laughs> No, I have church that weekend. <laughs> How many guys here would love to be with two girls at one time? Clap your hands. Yeah. Oh, the chicken shit ain't clapping. <laughs> but his little pecker's going, hey, deal me in. What are you doing? <laughs> Let me tell you what. Girls, every guy's fantasy is two women at one time. I don't care what they tell you. That's my fantasy. Two little to... No, three little to me. I'm in the bedroom banging two and one's in the kitchen making me a lasagna. Oh. 
<laughs> Look at the big guy. They got lasagna here? That's bullshit. <laughs> uh, you know what I couldn't do? I couldn't do me and a guy and a girl. Shh, quiet. Shut up. <laughs> My right, fellas, two women is all right. I couldn't do me and a guy. Imagine me and Lou and some chick going at it. It gets too crazy. Nah. There we are, humping, bumping, banging. All of a sudden, I got loose pecker in my hand by mistake. Lou! There's Lou banging me. She's on the couch smoking a cigarette. Lou, I think she left. <laughs> All right, let's get the show. Now we're going to do a joke off tonight, Lou. All right, let's have a nice say for Lou. It's happy birthday, Bart. He's a legend, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to do a joke off. We got three regulars. What do we got? We got Chef Jeff. You fat bastard. You're a handsome bastard. Hey, who's this? Paulie. Father Paulie? I'm nobody, Lou. <laughs> Are you in the contest, Lou? <laughs> Who cut your hair? You got a fucking lawsuit there. What the fuck? <laughs> What'd you tell the barber? You were fucking his sister? What happened? <laughs> All right, we'll sit over here. Where do you want me? Sit right there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Give it up for the fat rap bastard, Jeff Perrini. <laughs> All right, welcome to the third installment of the three joke offs. Let's get them all set up over here. All right, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, tell you about how this is going to work, and tell you about the rules. First of all, we have some new categories. If you've been here, if you've been here before, let me see you raise your hand here. All right, we got it. Now to the to the joke off. Ever been to the joke offs before? Is there a third one? We got a couple here. All right, how it works is each category I call out. Each contestant will tell a joke, and we're going to have judges this time. Judges are going to hold up the cards. We have the five rat bastards, one judge. We have Team Marge back there. I'm here for Team Marge over there. And in the back room, representing the back room, Maria. All right, Maria is going to hold up the cards. So we have jokes that promise to offend almost everyone. Every sex, every race, every religion. I heard a wise man once say, if it doesn't offend somebody, it probably isn't funny. So the first rule do not call out the punchline. All right, that's the deal. Do not call out the punchline. That these guys work, and work they will for you tonight. Our first contestant is a perfect person to be the owner of the Happy Birthday Bar. That's because he's had more birthdays than anybody here. Give it up for Lou Cat. They say you can't. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can teach an old man new jokes. My man, Lou Cat. All right. All right. And then our second contestant, here's my uh, props for my second contestant. I want to introduce this, this next contestant the way his 7 o'clock crew, as a bartender here, would, would recognize more. On 7 o'clock, as Paulie works his shift here, I want you guys to answer this question for me. This bartender has four eyes. He serves drinks that he doesn't drink anymore at a bar where the men's room sign is bigger than the actual men's room. And he's one funny motherfucker. Please answer the question. What is make it a true daily double? Uh, the answer is who is Paulie? Give it up for Paulie. And this last contestant, we can compare this last contestant to a rooster. You know how? It's a little bit like a rooster would say, cockle doodle doo. This contestant will say any cock will do. Give it up for Chef Jeff. <laughs> Chef, if you don't know, don't know Jeff, Chef Jeff is one of our older gay gentlemen in the club, and uh, he's. I'm bi. I like men and boys. <laughs> he told me before the show. He, he, <laughs> he told me before the show that he's so old and he's an older gay gentleman. He remembers when the word gay meant the same exact thing as happy. That's true, because when he was young, he used to sing, "If you're happy and you know it, suck a dick." If you're happy and you know it's up to do. <laughs> All right, let's get the show started. All right. <laughs> Our first category, like I said, they're going to be dirty, they're going to be offensive, they're going to be racially on the edge. The penis category to start it off. Everybody loves a good dick joke. Who's going to go first? My dad, Lou Cat. Penis joke. Penis joke. Hey. A guy says to his wife, he says, honey, you got, we're married five years, you've got to give me a head. She says, honey, I don't know how to do that. Come on. He says, listen. He says, I'm going to go to work. He says, you get a ketchup bottle, and you practice all day with the ketchup bottle. When I come home from work, we'll try it, okay? He says, all right. So he comes home from work, and uh, he said, you try it? She says, I practice all day with the ketchup bottle. He says, let's get in bed. So they get in bed. He says, now just grab my dick and do what you did to the ketchup bottle. So she gets his dick, and she goes. <laughs> 
Jeff, 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 your turn to penis joke. Oh, hi guys, how are you? Hey, awesome. yeah. how are you? Good morning. Hi, how are you? Once again, how are you? Awesome. All right, thank you, you fucking drunks. All right, two penises are walking by a gay bar. One says to the other, hey, do you want to go inside and get shit faced? <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right. And Paulie, Paulie, penis joke. All right, all the guys in here, you know you know what you call a girl who likes little penises? What? Your girlfriend. <laughs> all right, let's hear from our judges. Which one? Very nice, very nice. I, I think I think this round was going to go to Luke Cap. I think that was painful, but very he funny. Won. Yes. <laughs> he was a one for Chef. Jeff, Lou, and Team Maria. Paul Lee, it's a three-way tie. Let's move on. Oh, nice. So we're up here having a three-way. Let's move on to the opposite. Sex, vagina joke. Vagina joke. Vagina joke? Okay, a vagina joke. Ooh, I had a big way back for this one. Is there an echo? <laughs> an old couple lives on a farm. A couple lives on a farm, and, and uh, the lady's in an outhouse. And all of a sudden, she starts screaming to her husband. She says, I fell in the toilet. I fell in the toilet. Hurry up, go get the doctor, right? She says, not only I fell in the toilet, some mouse ran in my vagina. He says, holy Christ. So he calls the doctor, and he tells the doctor what happened. The doctor says, holy God. He says, listen, it'll take me about 15 minutes to get there. In the meantime, get a piece of cheese and put it in front of your wife's vagina. Try to get the mouse out. He says, okay. So the doctor finally gets there, and he looks, and there's the guy. He says, he's got a fish, and he's going like this in front of her vagina. He said, what are you doing? I told you to get cheese to get the mouse out. He said, I got to get the cat out first. <laughs> Boy, that's old, huh? That one smells, too. Sit down. <laughs> Chef Jeff, Chef Jeff. All right, this is a true story. This guy picked up this chick over at the Ray's birthday bar, brings her home, and she wants nothing more than to be eaten out by this guy. So he's going down on her. I mean, he's, he's eating her out like a champ. So halfway through, she blows a little queef, and a cherry tomato pops out of her cooch. He looks at it, doesn't think anything of it. He keeps going back down on her, eating her, eating her. Another little queef produces a clove of garlic. He's like, what the fuck is this? She's like, finish, finish, I'm almost there. So, when you know it, she comes, she blows a big queef, a meatball pops out and hits him right in the chin. He stops, he says, honey, are you sick or something? She goes, no, I'm not sick, but the last guy that went down on me was. Oh. Uh, holy, can I see a menu? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff's getting hungry. Oh my God. Holy, holy. Holy. All right, this is gonna be short. There's, there's nothing funny about telling jokes about women's menstrual cycles, period. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we got here? That was very intellectual. The intellectual comes from, from him, so we got to give it to him, and that's oh, fucking hard to believe. Oh, 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 City card says, Paulie, oh, Paulie, oh, yeah. I know. Lou, Lou, Paulie gets the joke. Now, if it wasn't dirty enough, we're going to go to the next category, the dirtiest joke they can come up with. Dirtiest oh, joke. No. Lou. Jeff, Lou. Chef, Chef, tell the same one. <laughs> All right. A guy, a guy goes in there with sperm bank. He's got a mask covering his whole face, right? He takes out a gun. He said to the girl, get that out and drink it down. She says, what are you, nuts? This is a sperm bank. He said, drink that down or I'll kill you, right? So she gets it and she drinks it down, right? And he takes his mask off and it's her husband. He said, now, was it that bad? <laughs> Very nice, Lou. Oh, 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 oh. oh Louie. But I this, think you're, uh, in, you're in trouble with this prick. Yeah. <laughs> this joke is... Uh, Mainly for the guys, but uh, why don't you ever eat per uh, pussy first thing in the morning? Why? Have you ever tried to peel apart a cold grilled cheese sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck do you hang out? Somebody wash that mic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's, give me a condom. We'll put it right over the mic. <laughs> this guy comes home from work and he's really horny, so he says to his wife, Hey, honey, you know, I'm, I'm really horny. What do you say we, we get it on? She's like, yeah, except 
Um, tomorrow I have a gynecologist appointment and I want to stay fresh. He's like, oh, all right. Hey, do you have a dentist appointment too? <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. He said the dirtiest joke you know. Come on, fellas. That's, you got that's the category. Here, watch. Let me show you. A little Italian girl's getting married and she says to Mama, my honeymoon's tomorrow. I'm so nervous. She said, what are you nervous about? I'm nervous because my hole is so big. <laughs> the mother said, that's okay. We all got big holes in the family. She goes, I'm afraid he's not going to love me. She said, listen, you go see Tony the Butcher. He'll give you a nice piece of liver. You stick it in your hole, and he won't know the difference. <laughs> Sometimes they like it. So that night before the honeymoon, she sticks the liver in her hole. Her husband makes love to her for six hours. And they fall asleep. They wake up in the morning, and he's got to go out, and he writes a little note. He says, sweetheart, that was the best night of sex I ever had. I love you so much. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. I gotta go out and be back in 28 minutes. P.S. Your cunt's in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty! Dirty! So your jokes about liver, minus about grilled cheese sandwiches. The fat guys make the jokes about food. We got the sperm bank. The grilled cheese sandwich and the dentist appointment in the morning. What do you got? Is your winner? I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go with the sperm jank. I think All it was right. cute and dirty. The cheese one was Super good. Blue. Green for Lou. We got Louis. 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 Hey. Hey. Oh, hey. And plus, he's paying me. <laughs> <laughs> gay jokes. Gay jokes. Gay jokes. Gay jokes. Oh shit. Two gay guys uh, go to a carnival, and the one gay guy says, "I'm going to the Ferris wheel." He says, "You want to go?" He says, I'm afraid of height. I'm not going. He said, well, I'm going by myself. So he gets on the first wheel, and it's going round and round and round and round, and his seat breaks, and he falls right in front of the gay guy on the ground. And the gay guy on the ground says, oh, my God, are you hurt? He said, am I hurt? I went around three times. He didn't wave once. <laughs> I love that joke. I love the gay guys. <laughs> Good one. All right, Chef Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> So this gay guy goes to the doctor. He says, Doc, I have a terrible problem. Doc says, what's your problem? He says, three nights a week I go to the bike stop. I drink three quarts of beer. I drink a fifth of scotch. And I wind up going home, stripping down naked and blowing chunks. The doctor says, well, listen, it's normal for a guy to get nauseous after you drink that much. The gay guy says, Doc, you don't understand. Chunks is my dog. <laughs> Neighborhood. All right, so uh, this bartender is talking to his customers. He's like, you know, last night it was busy as shit in here, and I only made 35 bucks. And this guy is sitting at the bar laughing. Bartender's like, yo, what do you do for a living? He's like, I'm a male prostitute. He's like, you're a male prostitute. You make a lot of money doing that? He says, just last night I made $400.05 just sucking cock. It's like $400.05. Who gave you a nickel? He says, everybody. <laughs> I got it. They do the voices pretty good, these three homos. How are you? I got to give it the intellect. I like that. That was yeah. good. That was good. All right. We got a little bit of Pauly. Yeah. What do we got? Pauly, do we have a triple going to Pauly? Get our cards together. We got it. Pauly, Bri. Give me another one for Pauly. All right. Oh, that's pretty wow. close. Most offensive joke. <laughs> Be prepared to cry. The oh. most offensive joke. Okay. <laughs> this guy. This guy calls Quiet him. Quiet in the back. Quiet in the back. The guy calls in the work sick every Monday morning. Every Monday morning he calls in the work sick. He calls in. He says, "This boss, I can't come in. I'm sick." Every Monday. One day the boss calls him in the office. He says, "Listen, you have a good worker. You're a nice guy, but every Monday morning you call me and you say I can't come in. I'm sick. You know what is this? Every 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 Monday I'm sick, right?" He says, "I'm really sorry." He says, "But my sister's married to a guy. He's a drunk and he's a junkie, and he beats my sister up every weekend. He gets all screwed up and he beats the shit out of her. And I got to go over there on Sunday night and I try to comfort her, right?" He says, "I, I hug her, and one thing leads to another." And we wound up having sex all day Monday. The guy says, you're fucking your sister? He said, I told you, I'm sick. <laughs> nice, Lewis. <laughs> so far, you're winning. <laughs> that was highly offensive. I'm offended. 
I think that was a true story. No, no. A true story, true. Yeah. Oh, uh, an offensive joke. All right. Well, an offensive joke. Let me see. Yeah, wait a minute, Jeff. Yeah, just so you know, you're a little behind. This is going to be fucking good, you fat bastard. All right, all right. You know, uh, this is a cute one. Uh, what's black and holds 27 tits? The trash bag at the cancer ward. Oh. Oh. Yeah. We might have a winner. I think I won. <laughs> Sick, man, man. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna lose weight just to stay away from you. Let me, yeah. You know how you turn a fruit into a vegetable? Oh, AIDS. Is oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. that offensive? I, I want that happy taking off this fucking sign. I'm serious. It's not a joke. It's a recipe. What are we? <laughs> I, I gotta give it to the fat guy. Right. It was a very offensive chef, joke. Chef, chef, we're offensive. We got Paulie. Paulie, category. <laughs> chef, chef. So two for chef. chef that gives chef, chef gets the category most offensive. Yeah, keep it in the thing. Okay. Next category. Next category. One liner. What is it? All right. <laughs> a tourist goes to New York City. And he stops the guy and he says, excuse me, could you tell me how to get to the Statue of Liberty or should I just go and fuck myself? <laughs> <laughs> See, New York City, they're all like that. Okay, you ever been to New York City? Oh, they say, go fuck yourself. Whatever you ask, go fuck yourself. That's New York City. All right, Lou, one line. It's also no. South Philly. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was a 47-line one-liner. <laughs> how Lou was disqualified. <laughs> This woman goes into the bar, asks the bartender for a double entendre, so he lets her have it. Spell entendre for the We can't even spell appearance. Look at that sign. Let's give it up for the guy who made the sign. Appearance. Uh, this summer for vacation, I went to the Virgin Islands. Now it's just called the Islands. <laughs> Came back from his honeymoon, he said, I could have fucked her. Oh. <laughs> Lou was in the running, then he fucking had Alzheimer's and he kept fucking talking. I don't know what entendre means, so we're gonna give it to the fucking party. Sorry. Trifecta three for Paulie. Hey, and he's not a virgin anymore. <laughs> now, we're going to the poem. now we're going to the poem. A poem. A poem. Is the best. Oh, I love this poem. Nipsey Russell category. This is an original, boy. <laughs> there once was an old man in drag, whose tits started to sag. He dressed in stars and stripes, stayed out most nights. He was a grand old fag. Oh. oh, nothing on that one, Lou. What the fuck? He's a grand old fag. He's a high flying fag. And forever in peace, mate. Wait, I killed myself with that goddamn poem. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> You're fabulous. Jazz hands. <laughs> Where's all the gay guys? <laughs> right up here on stage. If Lou needs a date, call me later. <laughs> all right, it's my turn. Yes, you're up, gay Jeff. Thank you. This isn't a dick. Anyway, a hillbilly coxman named Rollo said one night while sparking in the hollow, did you know that my schlong measured nine inches long? She said, that's a hard one to swallow. <laughs> that's a limerick. What the? Disqualified. <laughs> Uh, Old man Hickey had a ten foot dicky, showed it to the lady next door. She thought it was a snake, so she hit it with a rake. Now it's only five foot four. Yes. And a little music. Paulie's on fire. Paulie gets points for singing it, right? Yeah. Points and for singing. Paulie. Yeah. Guess the, it's the rhyme and the uh, and a little music. Paulie. What do we got there? That's again, tri trifecta for Paulie. All right. And he wasn't going to come here tonight. <laughs> All right. All right. For Jewish joke? Yeah. All right. The Jewish category. Moving on to religion. Jew joke. 
Jujo. Jujo. Right. A Catholic priest wanted to become a Judas. So he went to a rabbi. He said, I want to be turn my own turn into Jewish. He says, well, if you want to turn it with you, I'm the rabbi, and you have to pass a test first. He says, I'm the rabbi who does the test, and the test costs $3,000. He says, $3,000? I don't have that. I'll give you 300 He says, you passed the test. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Salute the Jew. You like that? He no, was no, a, Rudy, you're going to lose it. He was a grand old fag. Oh, you won't stop da, talking, da, this sucker. Da, 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 da. I got to get that in. Lou, Lou, you're going over the limit, Lou. Sit down. <laughs> Chef oh. Jeff. So you want to hear a Jewish joke, do you? <laughs> this is one of my favorite categories, yeah. So, why do German shower nozzles have 11 holes? Because a Jew only has 10 fingers. Oh, boy. Thank you. Holy. Thank you. You racist bastard. Yeah. Volkswagen does it again. <laughs> Did he just turn the heat up in here, you fucker? Oh, <laughs> All right, Polly. <laughs> Polly, you're in the lead. Come on, don't oh, fuck it up. Lead. Yeah, how you get uh, 200,000 Jews into a Volkswagen? Oh. Two in the front seat, two in the back seat, oh. and 199,996 in the ashtray. Oh, oh man. Did you say the most offensive Jew joke? No, just Jew joke. Just Jew. Wait, wait, here, here's my favorite Jewish joke. Hitler came back, he was being interviewed by a young kid. A young kid said, Mr. Hitler, if you came back, would you do anything different? He said, yes, I'd kill two million more Jews and two clowns. And the kid said, why two clowns? He said, see, no one cares about the Jews. <laughs> What's the, diffi what's the difference between a Jew and a Boy Scout? What? A Boy Scout comes home from his camp. <laughs> and two, two Jews are sitting in the deli, and one says, Ira, I'm sorry, I heard about the fire. He said, shut up, it's tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> you can tell your kid got kidnapped by a Jew? Cause, cause the ransom, the ransom note has shipping and handling charges. <laughs> yeah. Why do Jewish men rewind porno tapes? They like to see the hooker give the money back. Oh. Hey. Hi. I forgot what the original jokes were for the contest. Hello. I like I like Lou's joke like was Lou? good. Where we got Team Mark? I love Jeff's accent. Lou, was great. shoot for Lou. Lou. All right, we got Lou. Mark it down. All right. Lou, did you ever win this? <coughs> Not yet. Uh, well, right, we'll change All right. that. Here we go. You ready? Ready? That looks good. <laughs> Here we go. Catholic jokes. Catholic I'll say my prayers now. Catholic jokes. Catholic jokes. Catholic. All right. A girl goes to her priest. His name was Father Sam Dusky. <laughs> oh. Sam Dusky, I said. Sam Dusky. That's his name. Father Sam Dusky. I can't help it. He had a name. She says, I must confess, this night my boyfriend made love to me seven times. Right? He says, seven times, he says, I want you to go out and get seven lemons and suck the juice out of every lemon. Out of seven lemons, suck every piece of juice out of it. She says, will that uh, resolve all my sins? He says, no, but I'll get the smile off your fucking face. <laughs> and Lou, 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 you're moving up too fucking far. Back up, Lou. He's, he's working you're trying the mic. to get an advantage. Move back it up, the mic. He's, he's like Elvis. Elvis. He's got to go to the men's room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. All right. Tommy goes into the confessional. He sits down. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I uh, had carnal relations with one of the girls in the parish. The door slides open. The Irish priest goes, Tommy, is that you? Yes, Father. Well, which one of the girls was it? Was it Rebecca? No, Father, I don't want to tell you. Was it Darlene? Father, I don't want to mention her name. Was it Clarice? You can tell me. Father, I just can't tell you. The priest gets pissed off. He says, all right, five our fathers, four Hail Marys, off at you. So as Tommy's walking out of the church, he runs into his friend. Friend said, well, what did you get at the confessional? He said, well, I got five our fathers, four Hail Marys, and three pretty good leads. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey!
Thank you. Nice. So a, a, Prize, uh, a Catholic, a Protestant, and a Mormon are sitting around talking about their families. And the Catholic guy says, I have four sons. I get one more son, I got a basketball team. And they're like, that's pretty good. And the Protestant guy says, yeah, I got eight sons. I have one more son, I got a baseball team. And they're like, oh, that's pretty good. And the Mormon guy says, uh, I have 17 wives. I get one more wife, I got a golf course. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> is, that, is this close? Is this close? It's close, it's close. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm gonna go towards Jeff on this one. All right. That was a pretty sharp one. Yeah. We got Team Marge. Blue. 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 What do we got in the Blue. back? Blue. Jeff, we got two for Jeff. All right, Jeff takes a point here for the uh So wait, real Catholic. quick. You got so one. the priest is walking downtown and all the hookers are coming up. Father, how about a blowjob? How about a blowjob? And he blesses himself and he runs back to the rectory, <coughs> but he's bewildered a little bit. So two in the morning, he goes over to Tom's and he knocks on the door and the nun answers. She says, sister, what's a blowjob? She says, $40, Father, save us now. <laughs> 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 all right. We're going from most offensive to most sacrilegious. Most sacrilegious. Most sacrilegious. Whatever joke will send you straight to hell. <laughs> An Irish Catholic cop was called to stop the man from jumping off the roof and committing suicide. He says, don't jump, feed my friend. He says, think of your wife. He says, I don't have a wife. He said, think of your mother. He said, I don't have a mother. He said, think of your father. He said, I don't have a father. How about your kids? He said, I don't have any kids. He says, think of the Blessed Virgin. He says, who? He says, jump, you Protestant bastard. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sacrilegious joke. This is quick, short, and sweet. Uh, what's white and falls from the sky? What? The coming of the Lord. <laughs> dicks right away I'm gay. Shut up. It's a joke, not a dick. Don't take it so hard. The Easter, a couple weeks away, you motherfucker. I'm so ashamed. Uh, so the Pope recently re resigned. You know why? Why? Steroids. Yeah, but look at his batting average. <laughs> we gotta go with that. We gotta. He's going straight to hell with that one. Because yeah, that, that. Oh, we all know that he doesn't have to jerk off. He's yeah. Yeah. Sacrilegious. Yeah. Yeah. Pride, Chef Jeff. All right. We got a Lou. One for Lou, but two for Jeff. Lou, Let's Jeff. Give it to Jeff. Give it to Jeff. Two for Jeff. One for Lou. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Italian. To Italian, moving on to the races. In this uh, neighborhood? Italian. 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 Forget about it. Ah. Oh, when the official moved them up, I told you, Lou. A black guy, an Irish guy, and an Italian guy are in a bar, and they're talking about who can make their wife scream the most with sex. Hey? So they said, so let's go home tonight, we'll have sex with our wives, we'll be here tomorrow, and we'll talk about who can make, who made their wives scream the most, right? So the next day, so the black guy says, I'm going first. He says, I gave my wife everything I had. Man, you had to hear her scream. 12 inches, right? I gave her, right? The Italian guy said, shit, man. I turned my wife around, I screwed her in the ears for the first time. You had to hear her scream. The Italian guy said, you know what? I screwed my wife the same way, the regular way. He said, when I got done, I went over and I wet my dick on a pile of curtains. You had to hear her scream. Louis, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Louis, he's back, he's back, he's back. He's back, baby. <laughs> you, got, you got me telling an Italian joke in South Philadelphia. That's fun, yeah. that's, that's good. Show of hands, we got any Italians here? All right, show you. All right, I'll talk slower. I'll talk slower, all right. Yeah, we don't want to have to tell this joke twice. I don't have to tell it twice, yeah. So, uh, you know the Tarzan movies. You got Tarzan, Jane, Cheetah. You know the old movies, black and white. If Tarzan and Jane were Italian, what would that make Cheetah? What? He'd be the one in the movie with the least back hair. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, then. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. You wouldn't like it. I just lay there and sweat, honey. <laughs> so, uh... You know why Italians don't have freckles? Why? Because they slide off. Oh. 
Gets the Italian round. No favoritism there. What do we got there? Irish. 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 An Irish joke? Irish. Irish. Guy comes in to raise happy birthday bar. He said, I just came from Ireland. He said, I left my brothers in Ireland. He said, and every day, he said, we had a shot of Jameson, the three of us. He said, and I told him when I came to Philadelphia, I'd go in a bar, and I would never forget my brothers. And they had three shots of Jameson, one for each of us every day. And the bartender says, that's really nice of you, you know, and that's really great, you know. This goes on for two or three months. One day he comes in and he said to the bartender, just give me two shots today. He says, oh my God, is there something happened to one of your brothers? He said, no, I quit drinking. <laughs> uh, he was a grand old fag. He was a fan all day, the high fire fag. We're going to take some points off for that fag joke again, Lou. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Unless you're telling a joke about the two gay Irishmen, Brian Fitzpatrick and Patrick Fitzbrian, but that's not my joke. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. Now, he should have said it wasn't his joke before he said it. We, we, hey, uh, we'll give you want me to... Hey, I'm sorry. So, Or I should quit while I'm behind. Anyway, this guy's sitting at the bar. He's sitting there just having a quiet drink. This drunk old Irish prick comes staggering in, drunk off his ass. He goes up to the guy. He smacks him in the back of the head. He says, I fucked your mother last night. Everybody thinks there's going to be a fight. He doesn't do a thing. He just sits there and quietly drinks his drink. The drunk staggers off. A few minutes later, the guy comes back again. He says, smacks him in the head. He says, your mom likes sitting on me, dick. The guy doesn't do a thing. Everybody thinks, whoa, who is this fucking guy? Finally, the guy comes back one last time. The drunk old Irish prick smacks him in the head. He says, your mom gets the best blowjobs in town. The guy slams his beard down. He turns around, grabs him by the collar, and says, for fuck's sake, dad, go the fuck home. You're drunk again. <laughs> So, so this five-year-old kid, this, <laughs> this five-year-old kid goes up to his dad and says, "Daddy, are we Irish?" And dad says, "Shut up and drink your whiskey." <laughs> Here, Anthony, let me tell one. Irish guy's walking on the beach and he finds a lamp, a landing's lamp. He rubs it. A genie comes out. He says, "You get one wish." And the Irish guy says. I wish I could piss the best Irish whiskey. <laughs> and again, he said, you got it. He pulled out his dick, he pissed on his finger, he went, who is the best Irish whiskey I've ever tasted? He runs home, he tells his wife, get two glasses and meet me in the parlor. And he go in the parlor, he says, watch this. And he pulls his dick and he pissed in the glasses. He says, take a sip of that. She says, I will not be drinking. Take a sip. And she said, she, oh my God, it's the best Irish whiskey I've ever had. Every day after work, he comes home, he said, get two glasses, meet me in the parlor. He pulls his dick, they piss, they drink, they get all fucked up. Friday, he comes home, he says, honey, get a glass and meet me in the parlor. And she comes in with one glass, all upset. She says, honey, why one glass tonight? He says, sweetheart, tonight you're drinking from the bottle. <laughs> I, think he, I think he just told my Mexican joke. I like Chef Jeff on that one. Thank you. Jeff, Chef Jeff, we got two. Yeah. Chef Thank Jeff, you. what do we got in the back? Uh, it's a three-way tie three for Chef deal. Jeff. Let's Thank give you. it to Chef you Jeff. You guys hit it. You guys fucking hit it, all right. boy. All right. Are oh, you get prepared? It's Polish jokes coming up. Polish jokes. See if we can top them. All right. All right. The Polish category. Been a victim for years of Polish race. Here we go. <laughs> this Polish couple was celebrating their 50th anniversary. They went back, they got the same hotel, the same room, everything the same, right? She says to her husband, Stash, she says, remember when we got married 50 years ago? She says, the next morning we ordered breakfast, we sat at the table naked and ate it. Let's do that again. He says, sure, honey. So the next morning they order breakfast, the guy leaves, they take their clothes off, they sit at the table, and she leans over the table. She says, you know what, honey? She says, it might be 50 years, but you still make my nipples hot. He says, that's because once in the coffee and once in the oatmeal. Oh. Uh, Lou, Lou. <laughs> uh. Hey. 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 Hey.
<laughs> All right, so this guy, he goes, he goes into a bar. He goes up to the bartender. He says, listen, man, I heard the funniest damn Polish joke. If I don't tell somebody, I'm going to burst. The bartender looks at him and a little disgusted. He says, I'm Polish, pal. I don't mind if you tell me your joke. But you see that guy at the end of the bar? That's Stash. He's our bouncer. He's 100% Polish. The guy sitting next to him, that's his brother Lenny. He's a kickboxer. He's Polish. The guy coming in over there at the men's room, he's chief of police in this town. He's Polish. You still feel like telling your little joke? The guy thinks about it for a minute. He goes, no, nah, I guess I better not. I don't feel like telling it four times. <laughs> That was good, Jeffrey. All right, knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? there? The Polish burglar. Polish burglar who? <coughs> you missed it. Uh, knock, knock. Who's it's there? The Polish burglar. The Polish burglar who? The Polish burglar who's, who's knocking on your door and telling you that he's a burglar. <laughs> These lights are getting to you. All right, all right, I lose this week. We need some air in this room. We need some fucking air. All right. I don't know. I think we got to go with Jeff for that one. That was good, Jeffrey. Stash and Stanley are at work on Friday, and every Friday the boss leaves at two o'clock. And Stash looks at Stanley. He says, "When the boss leaves this Friday, I'm fucking taking off." He said, "Don't do it. You'll get fired." He goes, "No, I'm fucking doing it." Two o'clock, the boss leaves. Stanley goes, "I'm fucking leaving," and he takes off. And he goes home, and there's the boss's car in the driveway. He goes on the side of the house, gets on the garbage can, looks in, and there's the boss fucking his wife. He falls out the can, they go lift her head, and he fucking runs off. Monday, they get to work, and Star says, Stanley, he goes, you're going to sneak away again on Friday when the boss leaves? He goes, are you kidding me? I almost got caught last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more Polish joke. Okay? One more Polish joke. One more Polish joke. joke. One more Polish joke. Uh, this Polak sitting at the bar, and he's talking to this girl, and he says, uh, you're really cute. He says, what's your name? She says, Carmen. He says, Carmen, is that your real name? She says, no, I like cars and I like men, so I call myself Carmen. He said, that's nice. She says, what's your name? He says, beer fuck. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Lou, you should have pulled that one, you fuck. <laughs> Mexican, Mexican, Mexican category coming up. You ready for Mexican joke? All right. See, they don't fuck around in this bar. You guys don't fuck around. These two guys were in a bungee jumping business, you know, all over America. So the guy says, let's expand. He says, let's try it in Mexico. We'll see what happens. So they go to Mexico, and the two guys, they get on a roof. He says, I'm going to drop you down, and I'll see how far you can go, and I'll pull you back up. So he drops the guy down, the guy comes up, and he's holding his chin like this, right? <laughs> drops him down again, he comes up, he's holding his arm, right? right? Drops him down again, he comes up, he's holding his leg. He said, what's the matter? The guy said, I don't know, what the fuck's a piñata? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> See, uh, okay, uh, this is quick. What do you call uh, four Mexicans up to their neck in quicksand? What? Cuatro Cinco. <laughs> <laughs> You know how you save you, you know how you save a Mexican from drowning? Oh. You take your foot off his neck. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> what does a Mexican and a cue ball have in common? What? Well, the harder you hit it, the more English you'll get out of it. <laughs> I don't like these racist jokes. If you heard Juan, you've heard Jamal, you know? Hey. <laughs> All right, who we got for Mexican category? Who you got? Your, your winner there. <laughs> the, the piñata. <laughs> I'm going to go Pauly. Pauly on that one. Go Pauly. Pauly. What do we got in the back? Lou. 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 Piñata. Lou, two for Lou. Lou. And the piñata joke. Lou. All right. <laughs> We're going to go with our most racist joke of them all. Oh all right? This is the last joke of the night. The most racist. Lock the, if you want to leave, leave now, please. <laughs> if you're easily offended. All right, most racist joke. <coughs> <laughs> a priest, a rabbi, a minister, an Italian, a Jew, a Polak, a black guy, <laughs> a Mexican, and an Asian. You missed one. We they, have a winner. <laughs> they, they came in the raised happy birthday bar. <laughs> and Paul said to them, we don't serve your kind in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that day. <laughs>
Those guys look like trouble. And the winner is Lou. And the win That sounded like your one-liner. <laughs> that was the shortest joke. Uh, yeah. All right, quiet, quiet, Jeffrey. All right, now this is this is a cute little ditty. Leroy Brown picked up this hot Asian broad at the nightclub, takes her home. They get in the front door, she runs into the bedroom, throws her pocketbook on the bed, strips down naked junks on the bed. She says, oh, Leroy Brown, show me what it's true they say about you black men. So he stabs her twice and steals her purse. <laughs> <laughs> Lou! All right. <laughs> all right, everybody brace yourselves, all right? What do you say to a black Jew? Get to the back of the oven. Oh. <laughs> Racist and offensive. That's a Sammy Davis joke, Ben. Three, a 300 pound black lady waiting for the bus in Buffalo, New York. It's 30 below zero, snow everywhere, and she's gotta take a shit. <coughs> Nobody around, she lifts her skirt and drops a big pile of steaming shit. Just then the bus pulls up, she pulls down her skirt, the bus driver opens the door, she says, how much to go downtown? He says, Three fifty for you, but your kid can't smoke on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is not a great. Wait, I remember this. Here's I am. <laughs> this ain't it. Three little black kids are walking through a field, and there's a black couple fucking. They call their father. Father calls the cops. They arrest them. The kids got to testify in court. They go to the first little black kid, what did you see in the field? He said, Your Honor, we were cut through the field, we saw him and her and him, and they was fucking. He said, ten dollar fine, get out of my court. The second black kid come up, he said, what did you see in the woods? He said, Your Honor, we were cut through the field, we saw him and her, and, and, and they was fucking. He said, ten dollar fine, get out of my court. Hope I remember this. And the judge said, okay, son, be careful, you saw what happened to your friends. What did you see in that field? Your Honor, we were coming through. I saw him and her and, and him. And I saw ten toes up and ten toes down. Two black asses going round and round. A thin piece of meat going in and out. If that ain't fucking, you can throw me out. <laughs> can, can I dare to try one? Can What's I, that? Can I, can I dare to try? Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, What's uh, the uh, fun? Uh, All right. Two black men are sitting in Ray's bar talking. And one black man says, man, every time I make love with a uh, white woman, my nose gets all itchy and my throat starts to burn. And another guy, black guy says, yeah, it happens to me too. It must be the mace. Ah. Uh, uh, no? Oh, no, uh, that's, come uh, on now. Just, come hey, on. just, just I mean, be aware. I've been, I've been hearing jokes all my life. I couldn't try one myself. No, but yeah. just so you know, tomorrow when you're robbed, you know why. <laughs> yeah. When you're wiping the mace out of your eye. That's not a joke, though. That's real. <laughs> Check Stop him. crying. Stop Check, crying. Check him for a weapon right now, you motherfucker. <laughs> On the ground, hands up, you motherfucker. Anthony Capazzoli, you have a call from the NAACP, line one. I smell smoke. Hello. NAACP, line one. All right, we got the Wait, most racist joke. What? Got another one? Jesus walks in the bar, and there's a Polish guy, a black guy, an Italian guy in the bar, if I remember this. And Jesus walks up, and he sees the Italian guy, and, and his, his arms are cast, and he walks up, and he touches him, and he says, you're healed, my son. And he walks up to the Polish guy, he's got a neck brace, he rubs him, he says, you're healed. And he walks to the black guy, and the black guy says, don't touch me, I'm on disability. Kill it. Who's who? 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 Remind us. Remind us of your punchline. The back of the oven. He's Lou. Back of the oven. We have Lou has everyone in the I think Lou, I think cover everybody. We got to give it to Lou. Lou covered everybody. Lou? What do we got there? Holy, two for Lou, one for Polly. All right. While we're telling up the votes, do we have any uh, miscellaneous jokes you want to throw out there? Anything we left out? Why do rhinoceros have go. sex in water? Have you ever tried to keep a seven-pound clitoris moist? Oh, man. <laughs> a guy walks in the doctor's office. He said, I was raped by an elephant. And the doctor said, get addressed. Let me look. The guy gets addressed. He bends over. His asshole is the size of a garbage can. <laughs> and the doctor said, wait a minute, buddy. 
no way an elephant can do this. Their penises are long and thin. And the guy said, I think he fingered me first. (laughs) So a woman walks into a police station and says to the desk sergeant, I just got raped by a Polish guy. Desk sergeant's like, how do you know he was Polish? She says, I had to help him. Uh, Lou! Lou! Give us your favorite joke, Lou! Favorite joke, okay. This, uh, a guy's working in his garage at night, and uh, he's got an electric saw, and he cuts his hand off, and he ties it like this, right, and he runs down the street, and he sees a doctor sign, he knocks on the door, and the doctor comes out, could I help you? He says, Doc, he says, look at my hand, it's hanging off, could you stitch this? He says, you got insurance? The guy says, no. He says, it's a $5,000 operation, you got $5,000? I said, I got that kind of money. I'm sorry. He slams the door in his face. He says, son of a bitch. So he starts running down the street, and, and he, he sees this little sign hanging. Right, like a, it says, doctor. He bangs on the door. A little Vietnamese guy comes out. He says, doc. He says, my hand's hanging off. Could you stitch this? He says, yeah. He says, how much? He says, $50. He says, okay. So he goes in, and he gets a stitch. He said, son of a bitch. He wanted 5000 I had it for 50 I'm going to wake him up again. So he knocks on the door. Doctor comes down. He says, what do you want now? He says, you son of a bitch. You wanted $5,000? I want a few blocks away to I got them up for $50. You know what I got to tell you? Hey, uh, oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> What's the total? One total? You're not telling your little uh, ending here? Jeff, oh, give us one, Jeff. Oh, you want a quick one, quick one. Uh, what does uh, sex with a woman in Kentucky Fried Chicken have in common? What? what? By the time you're done with the breast and the thigh, all you have left is that nasty greasy box to stick your bone in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are a sick boy. Next week, he's going to wear a sheet. We'll be all right. It'll be nice. Gail, Gail love that. It one. will be a designer sheet. <laughs> Holy fuck. All right, let me say, let me say my favorite joke. All right, um. A deaf mute couple going to have sex for the first time. And the girl said to the boy, you want to have sex? And the boy said, okay. And the girl said, you got protection? And he said, no. And she said, you get protection and we'll have sex. He said, okay. Half hour goes by, he comes back, she's all excited. Did you get the protection? And he said, no. And she said, what happened? He said, he didn't understand me. She said, look, you go back and take this dollar, put the dollar on the counter, put your dick on the counter, he'll know what you want. He said, okay. Half hour goes by, he comes back, she's all excited. Did you get the protection? And he said, no. And she got mad. She said, did you do what I told you? He said, yeah. I put my dollar on the counter, I put my dick on the counter, he put his dick on the counter, it was bigger, he took my dollar. (laughs) All right, we've been doing this joke off. The joke off. The joke off. This is our third time at the kitchen before. Oh, we got to cut now, yeah. Third time. Our first time, we had to give it to Chef Jeff. He was the uh, man who came from behind. Remember that? All right, he came by in his car. Always from behind. From behind. behind. And yeah. then, then we had Mr. Paul Lee. Took over the last time a few months ago. Won the second category. Oh, man. We're pulling for Lou. All right, I'm proud to say the winner is... Lou Cat! The owner! The owner! You know what that means? We gotta see these guys back here. Free drinks for everybody! (laughs) You're a grand old fag, you're a little fag. fag. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out. Big round for Jeff, the fat rat bastard, Burhani! No, I just wanna say, I'm available for children's parties. I do children, but listen, I'll be at the Brigada uh, June 3rd through the 9th. You want to come down to the Brigada? Jeff has pictures here he's going to sign. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you to Paulie. Paulie. Paulie, Paulie. Did you say Paulie? Hey, Brad, get everybody a drink. Hey. One club soda and 30 straws. There you go. (laughs) Chef, Jeff, thank you very much for coming out. Give it up for Chef, Jeff. Thank you. And the man with the most birthdays in here, the owner of the birthday bar, my dad, proud to say, Lou Cat. Thank you very much for coming out Sunday. Thanks again, Jeff Ramity, for making a great show. We really appreciate you coming out. Thank you very much. All right. I killed myself with that goddamn phone. Fabulous. <laughs> I 
don't like these racist jokes. If you heard Juan, you've heard Jamal, you know? Hey. <laughs> uh, this summer for vacation, I went to the Virgin Islands. Now it's just called the Islands. <laughs> I love you, but don't I love you when I'm in a boardwalk? I'll get $100 worth of funnel cake. Oh my god, I'll eat so much funnel cake on the boardwalk in the summer in Atlantic City. When I take a shit, I shit like this. Sometimes I don't even flush it, I just keep looking at it.